it's time we go ahead and get the 65 back running. I want to drive this thing today. <laughs> Here's the differences between these two flywheels. Now they're both 157 tooth. So you would think that this one will work just fine. Well, it will behind a stroker or something along those lines, as long as you want to run the different style clutch. So let me show you here what I'm talking about. So these two marks here are for your clutch to bolt down to. You notice how small and close they are together. Now check this out over here. You have the same bolt holes, and also two more holes. So this is a dual pattern, if you will, standard and also metric uh, flywheel. So this is your metric uh, pressure plate right here that would have come out of like a Fox body or something along those lines, what you guys are used to, a diaphragm style uh, pressure plate. So there again, let me show you what I'm talking about here. If you try to line these up, the holes are not gonna line up, but over here, they'll line up just fine because this has the dual pattern on it. This is your old style pressure plate right here. As you can see, the holes line up for there as well. Here's your new holes for your metric stuff and this is your standard. So right back here you can see where you're going to bolt your weights on and they are right here in this package. So you have your 28 ounce and then you have your 50 ounce. So you pick what you need. So if you're running a stroker, this would be a good setup right here. Or, or you can run the old style flywheel like this. You can go buy one off the shelf that will work, except for the fact you have to run the old style clutch. Put a little bit of Loctite on these. Definitely don't want this to sling off. So like I said before, here's your 28 ounce and it's just gonna go right here. You line those holes up. Tighten this up. Everything's looking real good. Let's go ahead and get this transmission in. Here's our new transmission mount but this is a t5 as you can see it's actually got a bend in it right here where it bows back out this way and uh, that's just because the t5 sits a little back in the car a little further back so that's what that is but what i'm going to do is just drop a, a bolt on one side and hopefully be able to swing this thing up um, if i need to to hold the transmission that's probably not going to work uh-oh you know what that means we gotta get this thing up there and get a bolt start. do now is put the cross member and transmission mount in the car so I'll go ahead and do that I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards hopefully this thing works out like it's supposed to if not we're just gonna have to fab something so all right I'll catch you guys in a minute so I just want to show you guys exactly how this cross member works fits really good really good it looks like it's crooked right there but I assume that's just the way it's got to be because everything seems to be pulled down flush but uh, transmission sits up in there just right and if you all are wondering, like, at some point, are we going to get to all this? Yes, that's just caked on grease and dirt. At some point, the engine and transmission will come out of this car, and then we'll really detail underneath here. But for now, we're not worried about it. Um, but everything looks real good. So I had to run a couple different size bolts up here because I couldn't find any. But uh, that's typical, right? Remember, guys, this is more of a temporary setup in this car right now. So, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go ahead and cut these, we call them uh, <laughs> these little turn downs like this. But how I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna cut them right here first. So then I'm gonna slide the three inch dumps over this to see how much I need to cut out up here. 
did you know that if you have a set of Flowmasters and let's say they're two and a quarter inlet and outlet, you know it's actually the same muffler? There's really no difference except for the outlet right here and you can make that whatever you wanna make it. So that's what we're gonna to do today. And there we go. Whew, that's actually gonna be pretty hard to do. So I made my mark and that is gonna be the size of the hole right there. Uh, this really needs to be done with a grinder, a cutoff wheel, because there's really no way you're going to keep that blade even remotely straight. So there's a tube that goes in there, and this tube will come out if you cut this. It'll all just kind of come out. So the, the tube itself is welded right here. So what we're going to do is just cut this out, and we'll have a big opening in the back of this muffler. This is what I was saying. As you can see, uh, the insert from where they actually did the exhaust work way back in the day is that's what's inside of here. So... Basically, all I'm doing is just cutting the outlet to whatever size I want. Always wear gloves, people. Beautiful. That's how that's going to look. Pretty sweet, huh? all welded up I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side this should work out pretty good see the fitment in here way better now uh, you don't have this tiny little hole and this really big turn down so I think that looks really good so let's go ahead let me go ahead and get the other one done and I'll probably run a fuel line from the new gas tank up uh, after I do the other exhaust put the drive shaft in it and guys we're gonna try to drive this thing today so I need to stop wasting time showing you guys all this because you're going to want to watch me drive it afterwards so i'll catch up with you whenever we start this thing up and go for our first drive all right that's it we got everything done uh, got the fuel tank in the car with a little bit of gas in it i think it'll be enough to go ahead and start it up um now look i just rigged this up for now none of this stuff is permanent it's got a rubber line that goes up to the carburetor uh, zip tied up out of the way we will be buying the correct hard lines to go back on the car but all of this stuff right now is trial and error and i do seriously advise any of you that are, are trying to get a project running trying to get it going i advise you to do this some of you cannot stand to half-ass anything and i, I get that I, I can appreciate that but if it's holding you back from maybe hearing your engine for the first time just go do what you got to do it's okay just don't post it on facebook so nobody can fuss about it right who cares as long as it's not a safety concern then it shouldn't matter so with all that being said uh we're gonna go ahead and try to fire this thing up see if we can get some fuel um up through the line uh, hopefully there's enough gas in the carburetor to let it run long enough to do that but cross your fingers guys let's see what happens starter sounded a little rough there so i don't know what the deal is with that i'm gonna have to check and make sure i got the starter nice and tight i'm gonna go to the uh, service station and get some more gas here we go all right this is it this is our first drive to the car we had to strap the door shut
much. She's still peppy too, like real peppy. Torky. It got about five foot of spinning both tires and it started spinning one. Yeah. It was just bouncing. Like Dude, right here. listen to me. That thing is so torquey. I'm not joking. This thing actually, I can feel it. This car is still pretty quick, guys. That was our first drive, like real drive. And I'm going to be honest with you, not one problem. Like the clutch was perfect. The shifter was great. The car ran perfectly. Uh, even the steering seemed fine. That's just because we were easing around, but it's just, I absolutely love it. I am stoked. Andrew, are you glad to see it yeah. going in its own power? Yes. I'm so excited, guys. All right, so at this point, we are going to take a chill pill with the 65. I do believe. We do have some parts over here um, that I showed you guys before. So we may, you know, start installing some of this. The bad thing about the way I did this car is that it's really all going to have to come back apart uh, at some point down the line. It's all going to have to come back apart because we basically just threw this thing together to get it to drive. I'm happy. Like, I'm, I'm tickled to death that uh, we were able to do this. But that's all I needed to know was that this thing would drive around. We obviously is not road legal or worthy at all. But uh, I don't know. I would send it. I'd send it, Andrew. I'd go to work one day if we had glass and we had some doors that would stay shut. I'd drive it to work. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right look i want to go ahead and wrap this one up do what you got to do half-ass stuff if you got to half-ass it just make sure you don't take it too far uh you make more work for yourself but get out there and do something as always thanks for watching